coming out to the Syrian refugee relief team travels to Turkey to serve their mission. The Narisuan University of Thailand awarded Master Zheng Yan for her contribution to society. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Helen Liao. Thank you for joining us. Recently, the Tzuji Syrian Refugee Relief Team, which consists of 23 Tzuji volunteers, traveled for Taiwan to Turkey to extend their assistance to refugees from Syria in the country. Besides holding an aid distribution to help 1,500 Syrian families, the team also visited students at the Mena High Primary and Secondary School. Let's take a look. Professor Kuma will speak for a while after the Syrian children finish their performance. I will translate what he says. <laughs> as soon as the Tzuji volunteers finished their meals, they quickly rolled up their sleeves to organize boxes of stationery. We want to make sure these Syrian refugee children have a way to release their bottled up emotions and that they can receive some quality education. We brought nearly 840 kilograms of relief items, including chalk, pencils, pens, frisbees, soccer balls, dodgeballs, and pencil cases. To many Syrian refugee children, stationery is considered a luxury, as many don't even have the means to pay for their tuition. As children are faster and easier to deal with, many find themselves having more job opportunities than most adults. They have to work 12 hours a day. To give these Syrian refugee children a chance at an education, Tzuji volunteers decided to hand out financial subsidies to their families. We give them from around 70 US dollars to nearly 277 US dollars. What's the difference? It depends on their financial situation. We conducted a survey when visiting each household to understand their situation. There is a financial standard in the survey that we need to follow. Very soon, Syrian refugee families in Turkey will be able to receive financial aid and relief items that are embedded with the love of the Taiwanese people. Before visiting the students at the Mena High Primary and Secondary School, the volunteers carefully tie a peace charm to each bag that is filled with new stationery. For many Syrian refugees, peace is an elusive fantasy, something for which they desperately hope. <laughs> Accompanied by local Tzuji volunteers, the Tzuji Syrian Refugee Relief Team arrives at the Mena High Primary and Secondary School to care for its students. He is 14 years old. He didn't go to school for three years. So he is now taking classes with younger students. I have been to both their homes. To help their family make ends meet, these two students had to work as a tailor and a janitor. I have been to these students' workplace before. Their employers didn't want them to leave because they don't have to pay a lot to hire children. Children can perform as well as or even better than adults. Thankfully, with the assistance of the Turkish government and local Tzuji volunteers, these Syrian refugee children can finally continue their education and pursue their dreams. I want to become an ophthalmologist because my sister suffers from eye problems. I want to find a cure for her illness. I used to feel hopeless because I couldn't go to school when I fled to Turkey. Luckily, I met the Tzuji volunteers. Now, I can finally pursue my dream once again. When I was working, I felt that I was living for others and not myself. Back in Syria, I was always the first in my class. When I fled to Turkey, all I could do was work. And I didn't even dare to think about my future. Tzuji volunteers restored the smiles on our faces. I will work hard in school and continue being the first in my class. Touched by the students' words of gratitude, Tzuji volunteers find all who can no longer hear back his tears. <laughs>
with the support of kind-hearted individuals, more than 500 Syrian refugee children in Turkey have the chance to chase their dreams once more. Besides caring for students of the Mena High Primary and Secondary School, the volunteers also make sure to look after Syrian refugee families in Turkey. City volunteers respectfully hand over cash cards to recipients. Today, the volunteers plan to hand out aid, including cash cards, rice, sugar, oil, and much more, to 1,500 Syrian refugee families. Two bottles of oil and two bags of groats. Before the relief distribution, local volunteers listen carefully to the city volunteers for instruction. This time, the aid distribution is held inside a market in Sultan Ghazi. City volunteers carefully wiped us off chairs to make sure the aid recipients feel comfortable and welcome. Inspired by Tutu volunteers' effort, many Syrian refugees happily extended a helping hand to speed up the distribution. Thanks to the distribution, these Syrian refugees go home not only with much-needed aid, but also with hearts filled with warmth and love. The ongoing Syrian civil war has lasted more than four years, causing more than four million Syrians to flee their homeland, with more than two million of them ending up in Turkey. To help the tens of thousands of Syrian children wandering the streets of Istanbul unable to go to school, Tzidi and Syrian volunteers have joined hands and given birth this year to Mena High Primary and Secondary School. Recently, a team of 23 volunteers from Taiwan set out for Turkey to deliver the school students the stationery they need. To help these Syrian refugees, Tsuji has put together a relief team. After 13 hours of air travel, the team from Taiwan arrived in Turkey and immediately headed for Mena High Primary and Secondary School. The volunteers quickly opened up the boxes of the stationery they had brought and repacked them. Turkish students who were still in school came on their own to offer their assistance. Through your hands, I hope to pass these items into the hands of Syrian children so that they may feel loved. Doing this makes me feel blessed as well. Should Allah ever decide to punish us by bringing war upon us, I'm sure Syrian children will welcome us as well. Of course, we hope that would never happen. I'm very happy because in Syria, um, but, oh, I see. Um, so here is better. You get a lot of help. The school is the first semi-independent primary and secondary Syrian school on Turkish soil. The school was formed this year after much work invested by Tsuji and Syrian volunteers last year. The Turkish government has generously provided the campus, while Tsuji is to provide students with scholarships. Having witnessed the work invested by local volunteers, Taiwan's representative in Turkey has come to attend the stationary distribution. These refugee children, if they don't receive proper schooling and are allowed to wander around outside, not only will they become a problem for Syria, but also Turkey. So it's important for these children to get an education so that they won't have to be begging on the street or become child labor. Any refugee problem is always a humanitarian crisis. Overcoming the religious divide, the government and civil society in Turkey have come to join forces on behalf of these Syrian refugees. A freshman at Yunlin University of Science and Technology, Lai Wanxing of Taichung, Taiwan, had received Tzu's new shoe scholarship for four years straight. With both her of her parents ill and disabled, Wanxing has not let her family's hardships keep her down. Instead, she remains positive and optimistic, just like her parents, and has joined her school's Tzu Collegiate Youth Club so that she may pay forward the love she has received. 
Every month when Suji volunteers visit, the home of the lies in Taichung, Taiwan is always full of laughter. Only six years ago, the daughter of the house, Wan Xing, was only a seventh grader, but now she's a freshman in college. She's a hardworking, independent, amateur little girl. She's well disciplined. Wan Xing has always done well in school. Back in high school, she won the first place in a national competition and is currently enrolled at Yunlin University of Science and Technology. <laughs> Many years ago, Wan Xing's father lost the use of his left eye in a work accident. A stroke six years ago further limited his mobility and ability to work. Her mom can't hold a job for long as her kneecaps are failing. The family is not well off financially. When she comes home, she will help me with the laundry and even bring the comforters upstairs to give them some sun. We haven't been able to care for her properly. I had a stroke. Cici volunteers have been helping us. I am very grateful. With the support of Cici volunteers, the family has been able to endure their most difficult time which had an impact on Wan Xing. The volunteers told me I am now at the receiving end, but I must learn to give in the future to help those in need. Thanks to Ciji, the young Wan Xing can continue to work hard and stay optimistic as she pursues her dreams. In recognition of her contribution to implementing Buddhist teachings in Cities for Missions, Master Zheng Yin, founder of City Foundation, has been awarded an honorary doctorate degree in social development by Nari Swan University of Thailand. More than a hundred Tsuji volunteers, in addition to faculty and students of Narisong University, bore witness to the historical moment when Narisong University bestowed an honorary doctorate degree upon Master Zheng Yan. In recognition of her lifelong commitment to serve humanity by actualizing kindness and compassion, to bring inner peace and happiness to the individual. Nares Wan University of Thailand is honored to award Venerable Dhamma Master Cheng Yen an honorary doctorate in social development. Dai Ti So Yo Chi Ren Wang Chi Shulong Men Li So Yo. Chen since 2010, 140 people from Narison University have visited Ciji, and the school signed an MOU with Ciji University in 2014. Not only has Narison University recognized Ciji's charitable work. Coming to Ciji and witnessing the loving kindness of Master Zheng Yan makes us realize that compassion and selfless giving amount to more than a concept in the Buddhist text but a principle that can be practiced in life. Huh? For 49 years, Master Zheng Yin has inspired numerous people to partake in the missions of charity, medicine, education, and humanitarian culture. The honorary doctorate degree in social development represents encouragement, an encouragement that inspires Ciji volunteers to continue serving society and promoting world peace through selfless service. 
The simple act of becoming a registered bone marrow donor can be the difference that gives a blood cancer patient and his or her family hope for the future. In 1993, the Tzu Foundation established the Tzu Marrow Donor Registry, which was renamed Bhutan's Tzu Bone Marrow Stem Cell Center in 2002. Currently, Tzu Bone Marrow Registry has over 400,000 potential donors registered in its database and has helped more than 4,000 patients from all over the world. In fact, as long as you are between 18 and 45 years old and in good health, you are eligible to become a registered bone marrow donor. Whether it is taking to the streets to promote the cause or organizing bone marrow registry drives, city volunteers seize every opportunity to encourage members of the public to help save a life through registering as potential bone marrow donors. Controversy surrounding Tiji earlier this year, however, has significantly impacted the number of donors agreeing to go ahead with donations, as well as the recruitment of potential donors. We have seen a huge decrease in the number of people attending our bone marrow registry drives over the last year. On average, we always manage to recruit some 15,000 people a year. Now we're only seeing half of that signing up. Currently, there are still some 46,000 leukemia sufferers who are in desperate need of a life-saving bone marrow donation. Lai Jing An, who successfully donated bone marrow this March, did not finally become a match until 13 years after registering. He says he is glad he made the right choice. We kept the surgery from our parents. Seeing so many leukemia patients who are in need of a bone marrow donation, I don't regret my decision. My husband was still doing his military service at the time. On one of his days off, we decided to go on a date. We passed a park and we saw that Siji was holding a donor registry drive, so we both went to sign up. Currently, Tsuji stem cell registry is still in need of more potential donors, especially people from different ethnic groups such as foreigners and indigenous people. The more registered donors they are, the higher the chance of leukemia sufferers finding a matching donor. An extraordinary meeting took place on October 17th in Taichung's Jingsi Hall between former leukemia sufferers and bone marrow donors who have saved their lives as they celebrated their incredible bonding that they have achieved through bone marrow transplants. The former leukemia sufferers also seized the occasion to express their deepest gratitude to those who had given them a second chance at life. Thank you. I waited for eight years to say thank you. I've always wanted to hold your hand and say thank you. As the former leukemia sufferers met bone marrow donors who had saved their lives, no words could express their gratitude. Fu Zhaorong, who suffered a recurrence of cancer after a bone marrow transplant, was saved twice by Zhang Linkai. When I found out the recipient was the same person, I really hoped he did recover. I wanted to meet him. Zhang Linkai's younger brother, Zhang Shuhao, donated his bone marrow to another patient, turning the two brothers into lifesavers. When I found out they could donate their bone marrow, I was not especially happy. I simply thought they were still helpful. Another former leukemia sufferer, Zhao Xi from China, was in critical condition nine years ago and had to find a matching donor within 10 days. By a rare chance, Liu Zhihuan from Taiwan saved her life. She is my Taiwanese sister. We share the same blood. My blood type is the same as the sister's. I want to become a Tsuji volunteer and pay the love forward. Now I often bring my daughter to the hospital to encourage other leukemia sufferers. As bone marrow transplants save lives, they also create an amazing bond between leukemia sufferers and the bone marrow donors who give them a second chance at life. 
Registering to be a bone marrow donor is not only free and easy, you're also potentially saving a life as a marrow transplant may represent a leukemia patient's only chance of survival. 29-year-old Zhang Ling Kai registered to become a bone marrow donor with Cixi Stem Cell Registry at the age of 16. In 2006, he was notified that he was a match for leukemia patient Fu Zhaorong. After undergoing a successful transplant in 2007, Fu unfortunately we left the following year. Thankfully, Zhang Lingkai agreed to help once again. When the doctor confirmed that I had leukemia, my mind went blank. I wonder why it had happened to me. When I think of it now, perhaps it was meant to be. I felt ill throughout the entire month while I was undergoing my donor lymphocyte infusion therapies. The doctor told me I may not have long to live. It was really hard on me. It broke my heart thinking I may not be able to see my children grow up. It feels great to be alive. I'm truly grateful to my donor for being willing to help a complete stranger. I've been afraid of needles since I was little. When I registered to become a bone marrow donor, I wonder if I would be able to go through with it if the day ever came. I remember it was during the winter of 2006. I received a phone call from the Cixi Stem Cell Center informing me that I was a match for a leukemia patient. They asked if I would be willing to go through with the transplant. At the time, he told me that it wasn't the transplant itself that he was afraid of. It was the blood in the needles that scared him the most. He then said to me, give me one reason why I should go ahead with the transplant. I then told him, no matter who the recipient is, just treat the life you're saving as your own mother's. Would you agree to it then? On the day of my transplant surgery, there was also another donor, a man in his 40s, who was also donating his bone marrow. We both went in at the same time, but when I woke up in the recovery ward, my mom told me that within an hour of the transplant surgery, that man was awake and walking about. My mom got really nervous because I woke up only two hours later. When his anesthesia started to wear off, his buttocks also started to swell. He was in a lot of pain. Deep down, it was unbearable for me to see him in so much pain. My brother and I are more than happy to help someone in need, and we don't expect anything in return. We just genuinely hope to see those we help make a full recovery. Regardless of the patient's gender, nationality or age, I just want to tell him or her, I think you are very brave. I wish you a smooth recovery and may you be blessed with good health and happiness. Three years ago, Tzuji volunteers in China began to hold clean up events to promote the concept of recycling at the famous Qifeng Park. Thanks to volunteers' effort, the amount of garbage littered in the park has decreased dramatically over the years. We'll join the volunteers' most recent clean up event at the end of the show. Thank you for watching our headlines. Goodbye.